Welcome back to an episode of Meredith with a Y. And today again, we have Allison here bringing all the crazy topics. So get ready. Stay with us. Hello, everyone. This is Meredith with a Y, and I am your host, Meredith Willett. Today, we are going to go deep, changing lives, and I am giving you the keys to the castle. Thanks again, Allison, for being here for another exciting and adventurous episode of Meredith with a Y. I think you're stuck with me for now. I know. it's. I got to tell you, it's a lot easier having you bring the topics. And it's way more interesting because I tend to just talk about what's on my radar. And you just throw a great little monkey wrench in all of it and say, no, let's think about this. So, <laughs> so I appreciate you so much. And I'm assuming that the listeners do, too, because... I think that it's cool to go a little bit off the normal beaten path, so to speak. Yeah, we've all got our sort of like bubbles that we stay within. So we're making more bubbles here. Yeah. So what do you want to talk about today? What are you bringing to me today? And this is a topic I've been wanting to dive into for the past few weeks. It's a little lighter, I think. Maybe it's not lighter. I don't think anything we talk about is light per se, but (laughs) to me, it's a little bit lighter. And it's something I'm always interested in because I love... I'm just like, I have that brain that's, oh, how do things work? What makes things tick? What I was thinking about today was all the different spiritual modalities, right? Like tarot and crystals and herbs and ayahuasca and all of those things that kind of connect us in with our spirituality and or kind of with our divinity of some sort, like lets things flow through us. So I would love to talk about all of those and just get your feedback on what kind of what's happening when people are using those, because I think they probably all have, they're all different. And I'm really curious to see what you're able to see on the other side of how people are able to function with those different things. Yeah. I love this topic because it's it's so all over the place from very normal. I like diamonds, right? I like diamonds. Guess what? That's a crystal to you shouldn't do drugs you should psilocybin's bad judgment i had a i had posted a video on social media about the fact that we found a ouija board in our island house and people are just losing their mind got to throw that away you got to bury it you got to burn it like everyone has such strong opinions about um everything from crystals to tarot cards so i think that it's really very in line with what we're what so many people are getting invited to, like it's becoming more of a norm to go to a psychic or get a tarot card reading. So I think people are very interested in it. Yeah, I agree. And I, when you say, it's so funny because when you say people getting called to it, I just feel like not to diverge from this topic, but I really feel like so many people lately, especially are coming out of the woodwork with Mm -hmm. all of that and it's becoming so much more normalized. So I think people are using a lot of these things in their daily life, in their daily lives. So what a cool thing to dive into it to understand the mechanics of what's behind the curtain. Yeah, and when I first kind of started on all of this energy and I guess spirituality, I didn't even know that's what I was doing. I was doing the total body analysis, which uses vials of water that have a label on them, that the label and the wording on the label create a frequency that it, it, it in the water, okay? So everything has a frequency to it. doesn't matter what it is. It could be a word. It could be a plant. Everything has its own frequency. And then you start to understand that there could be a connotation behind the frequency, like a swear word has a different connotation than the word love. And As I moved forward, recognizing that things had frequency, then I started getting into things like medicine woman cards. And it's I look at them like tarot cards or tuning forks. A lot of people do those. Or there's also a thing called a spirit box. I look at those kind of like a crutch, if you will. They still retain energy. They still emit energy. And they can still be used to read or digest or discern energy or so, for example, if you're doing tarot cards, there is a frequency to each card. Let's break this down. There's a frequency to each card. So 
if you are inside of a tarot card reading and you were drawn to a card, you were actually drawn to that frequency, which would make it, in fact, appropriate for you. Okay, that's how tarot cards work. They're like a crutch to psychic work. I prefer to not use them because I think it muddies the water for me anyways. Are tarot cards val valid? Yeah. I think as long as you, you're inside of a healing intention and that you are a capable reader, that you understand your cards, basically what you're doing is you're using a sense of like clairvoyance, but in a very three-dimensional way to discern frequency, right? So there's nothing negative about a card. It's just a crutch instead of maybe leaning into your clairvoyance or your clairaudience or your clairsentience. So seeing, hearing, and knowing. It's a great first step to play with energy. It's a great way to uh, dive into spirituality or playing with energy, actually. Yeah, that's super interesting. So would you say that if I'm the one doing the cards, right? And if I'm doing them for someone else, how does that work? Because it sounds to me like what you're saying is like the energy is matching with the person that's pulling the cards, so to speak. So if you're pulling, if I'm pulling them from someone else, is it like me tapping into their energy, which is then going through me as a conduit to the card or like yeah. how does that work? Yeah. Like you can pull cards for yourself or you can pull cards for someone else or even for a couple or whatever, a group of people. And so your intention would be in your mind's eye, hey, I'm reading this deck for Allison. And a lot of times when you are doing a reading for someone else, I don't do this, but I've seen it done. So you would either knock on the deck of cards, like letting your energy kind of transpire into that deck, or you would maybe, okay, stop shuffling, or you would be able to pick certain cards that you were called to. I'm sure every reader has a different way of doing it, but the general gist is the intention, just like when I do a psychic reading, my intention is to read the person that I'm on the phone with, not myself. And so just shifting that attention away from myself is what kind of turns on that higher self, talking to higher self of the other person, focus. I'm not focusing on my own physical body. I'm focusing on how their messages working through me, et cetera, et cetera. Like with crystals are a little bit different. Where in crystals, if you study Dolores Cannon and she talked to people under hypnosis, they discuss how crystals are used to exaggerate or expound upon what is. So they, she talks about how crystals are used to power UFOs or to grow energy. So let's say, for example, if I have a person that I'm talking to who has a loved one who is on the streets by way of just homelessness or drug addiction, and there's nothing they can do about it, but humans really like to do something to help. And so what I tell them to do is get a photograph of the person that they love who is having an issue, and then write their name on a piece of paper with their full birth date, and then on that exact same piece of paper to write all of the well wishes that they want for this person. So not get off drugs. It would be, you would write, be healthy mm -hmm. or be well or have self-worth, finding your self-worth. So all of these wonderful words you're going to write on this piece of paper because in essence, once you write that person's name and birthday on the piece of paper, that piece of paper in essence becomes who they are. It's a frequency conductor of that person. And so when you write all those wonderful words on there, you're basically sending that frequency of each of those words to that person on the paper. You're melding those positive wishes with that person onto that piece of paper. And then I say, either get a crystal quartz, which is like a, a crystal quartz, quartz can grow the times. Like, so if you have a pink quartz and you put a crystal quartz next to it, it's like having a 10 pink quartzes, so to speak. They can become any, a crystal quartz can become any other, what's it called? It's like an amplifier. It's amplifier. Like. Thank you for the word. And so I tell them to put a pink quartz and a crystal quartz right next to each other on this piece of paper in front of the picture of the family member and then just send it positive energy. And 
if you looked at this in a black magic sort of way, it's like voodoo, right? You make a voodoo doll and then you do things to it and you send it positive or negative or, and it works in the same way. But in, the, in my case, I always do things that are positive because that's my mojo. And so it amplifies the energy of what you wrote on that piece of paper for the person that you wrote on that paper and then their photograph. And this is a great way to amplify the energy for this whole kind of spell, if you will, or prayer, if you will, whatever you want to call it. Because a prayer is a spell, is voodoo, is whatever you want to call it. It's, they're all intentions. They're all words. They're all energy. They're all frequency. And so when you add those crystals into the mix, you're amplifying the energy in the way that crystal is meant to sway the energy. I love that. And you know, what's really interesting too, something you just said is that I was, wa I was watching something that was talking about all these different modalities because you were saying like prayer versus something else. And they were saying, Christians call it prayer. Spiritualists call it manifestation. Atheists call it, I don't know, science or had some, some sort mm -hmm. of scientific word. So it's like, we're all doing this. Let's just level the playing here. Yeah. Level the playing field here for a second and say, we're talking about probably the same thing that anybody else is talking about, where we might just be using different terminology. Yeah. Um, which I think is just cool, right? It's like we we really all are trying to work towards the same thing. We just maybe have a different vehicle that's used. So like these the things you're talking about are different vehicles, which I think is just, I don't know, it's just interesting and it it can bring people together if you can think about it that way. Especially we like People, a lot of Christians will be like, oh, witchcraft is horrible. And that's okay, incense. <laughs> it's <laughs> okay, blood of Christ. Okay, right. the body and blood. Yeah. We're all doing some sort of different things that we feel are going to pump and circumstance us into a better position in this on this planet. And the rituals and the stand up and the sit down and the kneeling and the song and all of these things came from somewhere. And it wasn't a church with a metal roof in the middle of Kentucky. This stuff is being passed down by way of for thousands and tens of thousands of years because it makes people feel empowered. Mm -hmm. Make, there's When you sit down at night and maybe you say your prayers by yourself or with your kids or you sit around and you give thanks at the dinner table, all you're doing is you're practicing gratitude. You're focusing your intention, basically telling your kid, hey, Let's say our prayers, a.k.a. this is how you practice gratitude and love and kindness in the world. And when you flip off the person and have road rage, that is a prayer for that person that you're flipping off. So it's really super important that we understand that our intentions, just like a prayer in a negative context, has consequence to it. I was just thinking about this morning because I think about it often. When we tell someone like, hey, go to hell or I hope they burn in hell or I hope they get theirs, I always think about, and because we're talking about prayer, I always think about that people feel that request is going to happen in this lifetime. Like yeah. they want this lifetime to go to hell. This person, they want this person in this lifetime dub their toe or have a bad Bears. experience. Yeah, I hope you lose all your money. And that's not always how it works. Sometimes that wish, if you will, not that everyone has all this control over your experience, but you just really need to be mindful that can happen to that spirit that is reincarnated as a newborn baby. And that karma, that negativity, that bond if you will, could carry over into the next lifetime into a newborn baby that you have no awareness of. So I think people don't understand a lot of times that frequency and intention and prayer and all of these things are very powerful in the world. And when I hear you talking about that too, as you're talking about like prayer or the ritual with the crystals or how tarot works, I keep imagining just a folk a focus of energy. So I think at the end of the day, it's like, where is the, en like, how are we, it's like a harnessing of energy sort of this is how I imagine it when you talk about it. So it's like, we use these different, whether it's 
our words or prayer or uh, a process to which we create and manifest or any of these like modalities that we're talking about, it seems like they are all a way to harness a focus or an energy or an intention that we're having. And it's like, a, like you said, like how that crystal quartz is an amplifier. It seems to me like some of the things you're talking about here are like they're being used to amplify yeah. our intentions or our energy. So when you look at, let's pick like a different modality or a different thing, right? Let's pick a different thing to look at. And is that also the case with, let's say you brought up psilocybin. So let's talk about that. Like something like that, maybe break that down first so people know what we're talking about. So psilocybin is like the active drug, active ingredient, if you will, in what one would call maybe magic mushrooms. And they're finding in the clinical area of psychiatry and psychology is that it's becoming known to be very effective against cure, quote unquote, curing alcoholism, drug addiction, depression, anxiety. And when I look at, say, like a drug like psilocybin or LSD, the it's not psychiatrics. It's what's the word? When, what's LSD? It's a oh, psycho, like a psychotropic or whatever. I can't think of I the word right the now. Word. We'll think of it by the end of this. What I see that as being, which is interesting because when you said that you wanted to talk about that today, I, they instantly took me and showed me exactly what is happening when you take these these types of drugs. Psychedelics. Yeah. Is what they're showing me is it's almost like going into a wormhole. And so a wormhole is something where a spirit would be traveling, let's say, from source energy or from one dimension into another dimension. So when you come to Earth, you would maybe take a wormhole. So it's a focus of energy for travel to get from one dimension to another dimension. So being born here on, on Earth would be that. So no big when, deal. No big deal. <laughs> and when you take psilocybin, you're instantly transported into this wormhole to enter into a different dimension. So basically what you're doing is you're leaving your three-dimensional self behind. So let's say you do like quote, a light trip, right? So you do a very small amount of psilocybin. You're still leaving that ego behind. So an ego is everything that you believe is about yourself that you feel is true. I am a mom. I am a daughter. I am overweight. I hate doing things. I love doing things. I'm good at doing things. So all of these things in the three-dimensional world that I have found to define myself and I believe to be true, okay? And it removes that. It pulls it off of you long enough for you to at least have a taste of who you truly are, which is a spiritual being. Now, if you're going to go on a deep trip and take a bunch of psilocybin or LSD, and there's a great, uh, there's a great Netflix special on this. I can't even remember the name of it, but if you Google like psilocybin and that in the Netflix or look it up, there's a guy who took every Michael single Pollen. one of these drugs. Yeah, and the and Michael Pollan one. I think so. Yeah, I think I'd send it to you. Yeah, I it's told good, you about it. Yeah, it's really process. good. And he breaks this all down and explains like how he felt and what it was like and so on and so forth. And but what we're doing when we take these drugs, these psychedelic drugs, is we're removing the ego. And it gives us a glimpse. It's almost like having a near death experience where we're actually allowed to have a glimpse of who we actually are, where we come from, and it removes a lot of times that depression or anxiety of fear or sadness for what is because it allows you to see that what everything that you think that is really isn't. And so it takes away the gravity of life. Yeah. And, and it, that's why they're turning towards like ketamine and all of these different alternative ways of helping people with an anxiety and depression. Because once you see that you are God, you are connected to everything that this is all just a matrix bullshit game. It takes away that fear and gravity and sadness because you know it's a joke. You're like, yeah. what am I getting so caught up for? Like, 
what? major perspective shift. Total perspective shift. And ayahuasca is definitely coming into the mainstream. People are doing ayahuasca trips to different parts of the world, or there's even opportunities in this country where they can sneak and do it and they have people that will help you through that. And it's the same animal. You're when I'm looking at ayahuasca, though, it is showing a little bit different. It's a very focused, intentional trip. Whereas the other ones, when I look at them, it's the psychedelics, not ayahuasca. They're very broad. It's more of this is who you are in the grand scheme of things. Whereas ayahuasca, it's very narrowed. So it shows like when I look at the other psychedelics, it's like this six foot wormhole and you're spit out into outer space and you got this really great point of view from way up in the sky and you can look down and go, yeah, this is a joke. Whereas ayahuasca is more focused, which is why people do it and they call it sitting with mother ayahuasca. I think it, and they consider it like a plant medicine, very focused, very intentional. And it is, it's, when I'm looking at it right now, it's a one inch circumference focused trip that is actively asking you to look at this moment to heal that very specific thing that is being directed by when I'm looking at the part of the brain, it's towards the top front. I don't necessarily know if it's the prefrontal cortex or like a mixture of two parts of the brain, but it's it's very intentional to, and it's also like to remove fears. It's like the thing that you are afraid of will be addressed. And so that's how I'm seeing ayahuasca, which is probably why you have so many physical symptoms because a lot of people talk about it. It's almost like having food poisoning. You could throw up, you have like diarrhea. It can be very explosive. And what that is, it's releasing those energies and those fears and all of that, those trapped traumas from your body. And that's why it's so focused, I believe, the way they're showing it anyways. Super interesting. When you look at it, do you feel like it's directed specifically to something that's needed within this lifetime? Or is it like just overall for like your soul? I feel like it's something, they just showed it like, it's a step that you need to take when you're ready to get to the next level. So if you're really worried about maybe your children dying, maybe what they do is they take you through and say, hey, just for the record, you've always known your children. You will always know your children. And that fear of your children dying is actually keeping you from connecting with them. So we're going to show you your kids in these different ways. And you're going to work through that fear to get past this fear so that in this lifetime, you can actually relax or really step into that relationship with them. So it seems very appropriate to this specific lifetime. And they're also showing that because of things like the news and because we have so much access to information where we were not inundated even, even remotely like this 50 years ago, that the body traps emotions and traumas in, in much faster. Like we trap traumas. They're like, you literally as humans are trapping like oh, 50 to 100 traumas a day. Anything Whoa. like, yeah, anything from as small as a paper cut, it still has an impact on the nervous system to the news or talking to a friend or you pay a bill and that kind of gives you a squeeze, a tightening, if you will. So we're constantly trapping and absorbing so much trauma on a daily basis, which is why it's so imperative that we don't add to it by watching the news all day because it's more fears that we have to let go of. Yeah. Yeah, that's wild. Are we trapping more fears because we're because there's more coming at us and we're just processing more? Or does it have to do with something else in the way? Because I really feel like lately that I feel like we're going through a super transfer transformational period that is changing, like even changing like our physical bodies. Like I definitely lately feel, I was just texting you about this yesterday, like the energies are heavy and moving, I feel like through our bodies. So do you feel like that has something to do with it? Yeah. Um, you, you think about it, like when like they have solar flares, we, they talk about or the that 
the frequency of the earth, all of these things, for example, the full moon, more babies are born. The tides, which is affected by the moon, affects our periods. The moon affects our period. Like everything affects our bodies, whether we recognize it or not. And so now let's couple that with nonstop knowledge about everything on this planet. And we don't find, we don't listen to, hey, Chicago just opened this beautiful park and there's this wonderful waterfall. No, we hear about the one shooting that happened this afternoon. Like we are inundated with negative information that is one one billionth of a percent of the information that is going on today. So we, there was probably a greater, a greater opportunity for death when we were like all farming and we could get run over by a combine or trampled by an ox or starved to death or get tetanus and die or whatever. Like those were actual physical major problems that could happen to us. Die during childbirth because we're having babies upstairs of a farmhouse. But now it's we're constantly under the threat and siege of feeling anyways that we're going to die. We're going to lose all our money. We're something someone's going to break in our house and kill us. We're just under this constant threat of information. So are we in more danger? I would say no. As a general rule, the populace is not under attack more so than we were in prior centuries. But we feel like we are. Yeah. And whatever you feel like, studies show, right? Like you imagine something your body physically reacts to as if it's actually happening. Yeah. And go talk to someone that watches the news. They can report to you literally everything that could bad happen to you today. And they're carrying that information around. I will get texts from people and it's just, oh my God, you have to be really careful. They're like following people home and then beating them to death in their driveway. I'm like, bruh, no, do not give that to me. I just want to drive around today. And if someone pulls in my driveway, I'm just not going to get out of my car and I'll just call 911 like a normal person would do. I'm not going to drive around with this fear, but they watch the news, they read the news, they ingest all of this information and it's really taxing on our systems to live a free and expansive growth-minded um, life. But if you think about it, it makes perfect sense because the more people are afraid, then they rely on the government, they rely on the military, they rely on someone coming to save them because there's all of these threats. And you can literally live right next door to somebody with the exact same income, the exact same health experience, And if your neighbor is watching the news, they feel afraid all the time, all the time. The whole world is bad and scary. But if you're not, you're just going about your day and making dinner. And people say that that's putting your head in the sand and ignoring and being a bad participant of society. And I look at it and go, no, because I'm happier. I'm going to be a better mom, a better wife, a better sister, a better employee, and a better friend, like a better member of society because I'm not thinking that the sky is falling 24-7. And just like what they just showed me, a very quick flash, but when you are in the space of love and intention and kindness, there, (laughs) I love when they just start, no, you have to tell them this, show them this. Like they're like, have all these crystals around me. Like in this moment, they're like, no, amplify what you're talking about. Be intentional about what you're talking about. The way that they're showing me in this moment, and I literally have two crystals, maybe actually I have more crystals sitting on my kitchen table because I use them as decorations because I'm a weirdo. Well, that's just exactly. She's got like a old that video giant video. crystal behind me. I there know. we go. Is they're like, when you speak, oh, I love you. Have a good day. What they're showing is if you surround yourself in these crystals, it amplifies it out into the universe, into the stratosphere. So they're like, dude, put them around your house, put them in your garden, put them everywhere because the news and the negativity is amplified. So be an active participant, be an active part in changing the frequency of the planet. And I will be perfectly honest with you when I tell you this. Before this conversation, and even though I know about Dolores Cannon and her conversation with the fact that aliens use crystals, I literally still think we don't need crystals 
to live a spiritual life. But until this very moment, I thought they were bullshit. <laughs> they did. It's just, oh, crystals. It's just a bunch of spirituality bullshit people that want to flex or something. And now that they're showing me, I'm like, oh, shit, I guess I need more crystals. Better so stock can... up, everyone. I know. I'm like, what is going on right now? They're like, no, like when you love, even if it's just coming, they're showing me. It's like even when it's just coming out of your heart chakra and something, put them on your coffee table, put them everywhere. Because like when your heart chakra admits that love frequency, it amplifies through the crystal out into the universe. I'm so pissed right now because everything I've ever lived and experienced and talked about is like being squished. But this is the thing, right? I don't want to be Meredith Love and Light. That's just not my thing. Like, I don't want to be the person that has to wear the yoga pants, but like the balloon yoga pants, like elephant pants. I'm like, oh my God, I have to like go to Bali and wear my crystals around my neck. That is not my jam. Like, I am not that person. But now I'm pissed because like I'm like, oh, there may be something more to this that I should. And like I said, literally sitting here with a beautiful like multi-point porch crystal and amethyst crystal like they're sitting here and they're lovely and beautiful but now i'm like wow i'm missing the boat like i kind of i should be doing this but i never looked at it before and that's your fault once again everything is allison's fault (laughs) you're (laughs) welcome (laughs) oh that's so interesting okay Mm -hmm. so crystals now are we talking crystals like amplifying only good things or are we talking about it's amplifying anything good question so when you said only good things i instantly went to look at black and when you talk about a black crystal so black and red crystals are going to amplify the root chakra which is going to be being inside of your body being grounded in self so black is of course not negative but i was just like my brain just scans stuff so If you are having, so I I have a client who, actually she's not a client, she's a friend, and she is newly pregnant and has had issues with staying pregnant. And so I was telling her to really focus on like the root chakra frequency, root chakra, like talking to the baby to keep the baby spirit attached to her, which I feel like it's totally attached to her at this point anyways. I believe that it amplifies. I'm trying to look and see right now if there's a crystal that can be used in a negative way. And I'm not really seeing one. For some reason, they keep bringing me, when you're talking about negativity, they keep bringing me to straw. And I don't know why straw would have an a negative amplification ability. I think it's because it's a muted energy. I'm not sure. Like a muted, like it dumbs down the frequency for some reason. The straw that I'm looking at. It has nothing to do with gold, right? It's literally like straw, like the like white, like the white colored straw that you would use at Halloween for decorations. There's something about straw. It's almost like it confuses it causes chaos to your words. So if you were to speak into straw, like a handful of straw or like a cube of straw, it like sends the frequency out and it breaks it up and sends it into all sorts of weird different directions. And I can't see that anything else, like even when I was like, okay, what about grass? I like to mess with them. And they're like, nope, we're just going to absorb That's cool, too, because I just looked at grass, and they're like, grass absorbs your words. It's when you do grounding exercises, like laying in the grass or walking barefoot, it absorbs that high frequency, that chaotic energy in your body, in animals, things of that nature. So there's certain things that are going to absorb and collect energy, like the earth, like trees. And then there's other things that are going to amplify energy, like crystals. But I find it fascinating if anyone out there knows why straw could possibly, it's like causes chaos with energy. I find that fascinating why they would show me that. That's so interesting too, because all I keep thinking about, because I'm like a pretty avid hiker, I'm always outside. It's like anywhere I go that any naturally preserved land typically has tons of baled straw. 
for animals mm. and that's what animals eat. So, it's- so animals actually eat hay, which is green. Oh, so you're specifically talking about dried out straw. Yeah, like I'm talking about dried out straw. And I don't know why that is, but because my husband, and I know it's even weird that we're talking about this because I was always been fascinated. Jim would I'm like, is that straw? And Jim's like, no, that's hay. I'm like, is that straw? And he's like, no, that's hay. This is a common conversation between my husband and I. How stupid is that? Why do we talk about that? And then why is it being shown to probably. Yeah, exactly. You are fascinated with straw because you're trying to cause your husband chaos. Yeah, so it's it, they're showing me. But just if you think of electricity is either grounded. Electricity is, you know, if you put it by metal, it, it carries the current. So right. like different frequencies in electricity is probably an easy one for the brain to understand. Certain things can keep the electricity going and certain things kill it like the ground dampen it yeah yeah that's interesting that's yeah. super interesting so basically moral of the story everybody go buy crystals no shit my husband is wanted- so pissed <laughs> they are not cheap i will tell you what i took my kids to the crystal store the other day because they're obsessed with all of those things and we dropped some money in there they are not cheap my okay. friend thomas good reason my friend Thomas, I, he was going to start a crystal store, and I think he still has $5 billion worth of crystals, and I'm not kidding. So if anyone wants to buy some crystals, my friend Thomas has quality crystals, and he's like a complete crystal snob. Message me or whatever, or let me know if you're interested in looking at his crystals, because he's got tons of crystals. You too, Allison, because... He's got I'm the sure, inventory. He's got the inventory, and I'm sure he'd give you a deal. And so when I'm at the crystal shop, there's always, so there's little tags on everything, right? They say what they are, what they're used for, et cetera. Do you, like, when you look at the crystals, do you feel like they're all very specific to different energies, to like different purposes? Does it matter like where you put them in your room, like in your physical space versus like on your body? Because I Mm -hmm. feel like sometimes people use them in meditation and they place them on certain like chakras. Yeah, I love that. There's something very calming about that. I think when you're talking about like the energy centers of chakras, and I do tell people, especially if they have kids that are out of whack, I don't know how to say it. I tell people to put the crystals under their kids' beds. So to align and kind of tune, if you will, their chakras. So if you think of your chakras, so, you know, you have your crown, your third eye, your throat, your heart, your stomach, your solar plexus under your belly button, and then your root chakra, right? And they're in the colors of the rainbow, purple down to red slash black at the root chakra. You can put crystals in that same way, and you can Google this anywhere, like the color of the chakras. You can put those under your kid's bed in kind of that order. And when you do, if you were to do sound healing, I am 100% behind because our bodies are made up of water. And basically what you're doing is you're using like a tuning, tuning fork. fork, you're using a tune, a frequency of music, if you will, be it a sound bowl or a gong or bian, binannual beats. I think that's how you say it. You can look at this up on YouTube and just Google like throat chakra frequency music. And if you're having a hard time expressing yourself or you have throat cancer, or thyroid issues or whatever the hell. And you kind of, I look at that and say, okay, we are using the power of tuning frequency to realign the energy centers of the body. So let's say you're having a bunch of stomach issues. I would 100% tell you to go to the store Purchase black eyed Susans that are a yellow flower or yellow tulips. I would say to put more yellow in your house. Carry around a citrine or buy a citrine necklace or earrings. If you're having throat issues with your thyroid, I would say to carry around a blue crystal or have blue around you more often because it's a tuning frequency to realign and get back in center, back in line that energy center that is that color frequency vibration. So when you're on a plate with someone and you're reading their energy, could you specifically look at their chakras, let's say, and then say, okay, this, you need like X crystal or X Mm -hmm. color or whatever. 
Yeah. Like right now, because you're stuck on this with me. Like the first <laughs> I'm looking at you on Zoom. Like they're telling me right now, your third eye is off. So your third eye is like running away from your feminine side. So it's leaning more into your masculine side. So I would say to, which is then starting to make my leg hurt, which is my relationship leg and feeling supported. Oh, of course, my body's exploding because I'm tapping into you. <laughs> <laughs> this is what happens. Open yeah. Pandora's box. Yeah, I know, right? So when you, if you were to ask me that or a person were to ask me that in an appointment, I would basically just look at it in my mind's eye and be like, okay, what's off? Like what is either looks murky or slow spinning because shock chakras spin and so i'd be like all right or maybe it's leaning to one side so it's like almost like a flat tire that's making its way down the road and then i would just check in and see which ones look healthy or murky and then you can either carry that crystal or you could use music or sound bowls to retune that in you there, there like i said there's so much on youtube that you can google and so often people already know, like I'll say, oh, it seems like your sacral chakra is off, which has to do with creation and creativity and all of that. And they're like, yeah, I'm really, I'm a writer and I have writer's block. Yeah. Okay. And I can see that because your sacral chakra is blocked. So it's really interesting. So often when I talk to people, I very oftentimes am just telling people stuff they already know, but they weren't a hundred percent sure about. I think that's really interesting you say that too, because I was listening to something yesterday and it was like talking about how our, like, it's all great to have spiritual connection or to get downloads or to be tapped in and to have guidance. But really the most important thing about that is to use it for a practical purpose. They were mm. talking, which I think is really, because I think we can all get really caught up in like, spirituality for it, its own sake right like we're yeah. just it's interesting like to me it's super interesting I could geek out on it all day but really it's like are you using it to like better your life are you using it to take a step forward are you using it so like the rest of your life gets better or to give you support or whatever that is so I think like it's it brings this conversation really full circle to to talk about that because it's, yeah, there are all these really cool things, but how can we use them and how yeah. can we use them so that they can help us in our lives? Yeah, no, totally. I think that the biggest thing is for me, the first step in all of this is having the intention that you really want first and foremost to switch some gears. You really want to go inside and stop leaning on maybe religion or the negativity of the world. And I, I think that the first thing is quieting that ego voice, the negative voice, and start listening to the whisper, start going inside, meditating, calming the mind, and then allow yourself to dabble in some of these things. Maybe they are medicine woman cards or some crystals or yoga or sound bowls or healing, healing music and so on and so forth. So I think Having the intention that you really want to lean into this way of life or this experience, I think is the first step. And then I believe that the stepping stones will come to you just naturally and to have faith in that. Yeah, when you're open to it. Yeah. So I love this conversation so much. Thank you so much for bringing this up because I, that was, I'm so mad at you because now I have to go buy crystals. And I do think that it's important that people understand that Everything that you need is already inside of you. And that when I even say about the crystals, it's an amplifier, right? You don't need crystals to be spiritual. You don't need tarot cards to hear your higher self. They are amplifiers. They are crutches. They are helpers. But they are not the full Monty. Like you just, you have all that you need. But it's cool that they just showed me like, hey, if you're a positive person, Use these darn crystals to amplify that out to the universe. But you have everything that you need. But thank you so much for bringing this because it's cool looking at the ayahuasca piece and all this other stuff that I would have never seen before. So I blame you. As usual, happy to take the blame. I love it so much. I love it so much. 
Well, we'll see you here again next week. Thank you guys so much for listening. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me, Meredith Willits at gmail.com or over on any of the social media platforms. And we'll be happy to take questions or any other things you want to listen to or have Allison ask me. And we will see you guys here next week. Thanks for listening. If you would like to connect on a more personal level, head over to MeredithWillets.com or on Instagram at Meredith with a Y. For behind-the-scene footage and outtakes, please subscribe and come back each week for more Meredith with a Y. Thanks again for listening. Cheers. Cheers.